1950D nickel. Right. Now, 1950D nickel was a problem. It seems that the Federal Re they only made two and a half million at that time, which is not a lot of nickels. And the Federal Reserve, for some reason, shipped the whole thing to, I believe it was Detroit. And they were all in one bank. And everybody was looking for 50D nickels. They couldn't finish the, keep their sets up to date. I mean, it was just a matter of, uh, so finally, they, a few rolls show up. And a roll has $2 face in it. And dealers like ourselves pay as much as $100 a roll. And we sell them to our client at exactly what it cost us. All of a sudden, Harry shows up with a group, and he says, I can sell them to you for $10 a roll. And Harry made us whole. We gave back the money to the ones we sold it to, because a lot of them were young kids. You know, I, I, and also people who were on more limited budgets. And we kept it, and we, saw, and we sold them off. Uh, and we ended up probably with an extra 35 or 40 rolls. But we also found out that they also had a shortage of 50 Philadelphia nickels, mid-state, somewhere out in circulation. And we realized at the time that if we held on to the 50p nickels, there was a chance that we would make a little extra money for buying and storing. So this is what most dealers did at that time. Harry was good. He had, there was a fellow in New York called Max Hershorn and there was a few other dealers on the West Coast that Harry worked very closely with, uh, just like we did. We used to go, I'll go back to the role of Harry in a minute. We, what we would did, my father, my uncle, who used to travel to the West to everybody, made a deal with um, Dan Brown in Denver and made a deal with, um, oh Jesus, uh, I'll think of his name. What part of the country? Uh, it's California, San Francisco. Um, Oh, I'll think of it in a minute. I wrote about him this uh, when he when he put away. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of it. Well, he made they made a deal with a dealer in California. Let's leave it at that. It's not important. Oh, E. A. Parker. That's what E. A. Parker in California, and the deal was very simple. We would ship to them one bag of each denomination. And sometimes in half dollars, they were hot at the time, uh, two bags each. Because you lay out the money yourself. And then they would send us each a bag uh, or, or equivalent amount. Right. Back and, and the only thing each of us had was the expense of shipping. So it was very nice. It was a good deal. And what happens is they count as coins early. So when you or somebody else came in and they said, you know, I can't find a 49S dime or I can't find a 50 P nickel, uh, we had them available. We we supplied them. Yes, at a small fee, but we supplied them, and that made people come back because we were helpful. And that's one of the things that Stacks has always did had a good inventory, even of late things which are really were non money producing, but friendly producing. Fill the fellows' holes so he didn't have to keep looking for it to change. Mm -hmm.